In this second video on the Air Game Framework series, we are going to look at services. So a service is a singleton object. So in other words, there's only one that ever exists and it is initialized at runtime on the server side and it will continue to run there. So services by nature should uh, perform a service specific purpose. Uh, for instance, maybe you have a data service and this data service is only purpose is to manage data. So something like that. And uh, they're quite easy to make. So we're gonna, gonna dive into that and see how it works. So the API, API is uh, quite simple. Uh, a service in its simplest form will look like this. So you have a, a table definition along with a client nested table within there. And then you have a start method and an init function method as well. These are actually optional. You don't have to put these in, but they're uh, recommended to be here. Within the service, we have some injected properties. So we can actually access other services within the framework, as well as other modules and shared modules. And we also have within the client table there, we can actually reference the server itself again too. And that, that might sound a little confusing, but we'll look into what that means later on. We also have some injected methods that we'll look at. Wrap module is mostly used internally, but we can use this if we want to create another module and force it into the framework. Again, this is less commonly used uh, by actual developers, but it's mostly internal. Uh, but we also have some event registration methods so we can we can create an event specifically for the service. We can also create an event that is uh, exposed to the client, so we can fire events that the clients can listen to. And then we have a, a bunch of ways to fire those events in various different methods. Um, and we can also connect to events. So again, we'll go into that in more detail later. So the init method, this is going to be called automatically at the beginning of runtime. And the init method is run one after another. So if you, if you have a bunch of services, uh, it'll initialize each one, wait for it to be done, and then move on to another one. And in other words, it's a blocking method. It's synchronous. Uh, it does not move on to the next init method until the other is done. So the reason for the init method is to set up your module if there's anything that has to happen uh, for it to be ready to be used. What I mean by that is most services are going to be consumed by other services or something of the like. And so you want to make sure that your service is up and running, uh, ready to be used. And that's what the init method is for. Moving down, we also have the start method. Start method is a little different. This is asynchronous. It's not blocking. In other words, after all the init methods have been invoked and successful, it then runs all the start methods at the exact same time. And they don't step on each other's toes. They run on separate threads, essentially. So the reason for this, again, is to avoid conflict of things being set up. If we only had an init function, then it would be unsafe to try to use other services because we don't know if they're initialized yet. And if they're not initialized, then how would you wait for them? There's just not a good way to consume other modules in that case. So that's why we have a separate start method as well, where once the start method is called per service, we know that all the other services are ready to go and we can consume them as well. So in other words, if we have the start method running, I can go and reference a different service and know that it's good to be used. Again, that's assuming that we have set up our code properly as well. Adding methods to your service is really simple. You, you write it like any other table-based method. So, you know, my service colon print something and just like that. And then we can call itself using the uh, self uh, injected parameter. So we can also invoke other services. So we have this another service example where we're calling self to services at my service. So referencing this method here, print something within a different service. Pretty cool. 
and we also can do events and such. But before we get into that, let's show an actual example. So if I go into Visual Studio Code, I am going to go under Server, Services, and I'm gonna right click on Services, I'm gonna click Create, and I'm gonna call it My Service. And you'll see that there's a bunch of code that kind of generates right for you. Uh, and I have a start and init function ready to go. Now these are actually optional. You can take these out or you can only use one if you only need one, uh, but by default they're there and should be used. So we're actually gonna follow the example that's shown. So I'm gonna create a function for my service. I'm gonna call it say hello and maybe give it a name. So then I'll say hello name, <laughs> something like that. So now I've created a custom method within my service that can be run. So I can run this in both the init or the start. I'll do it in the start. So I'll do self, say hello, uh, put some fake name there, John. So if I go to studio, I already have Roho running. So I'm gonna run it. You see it says, hello, John, just like that. All right, but how do we use this from another service? So let's get rid of that code there. And I'm gonna create literally another service. And then within my start method, I'm gonna do self.services. And again, this is a, an injected uh, property within all services that references everything in here. And I can access it by the name that I created. So in this case, it was my service. And the method was say hello. And I'll do Bob this time. Save it, go to studio and run. And it says, hello, Bob. Great, pretty simple. So let's look at events now. So maybe we want an event on my service to trigger and we want another service to listen for it. By nature, it's good to have string constants as constant variables. So I'm gonna call it event hello. And we're gonna create an event called hello. So events should be registered within the init part of our service. So do self register events and then I pass in the name that I want. Just like that, and that will create an event. So now within another service, because this is created within the init method, I wanna make sure that I don't do, I don't connect it to within the init method of this other service because I cannot guarantee if that's been created yet. So I'm gonna do it within the start method. So that services that my service, and if we go back to our documentation, we can see that we can use connect events. We can make the function to that however we want. And maybe, you know, we received a little message, just like that. And then within our service that we created the event, we can fire that using self fire event, event hello, hello. All right, so how do we use this more practically though? So maybe instead of just doing it one time, we can have a for loop. So for i equals 10, And we can print out hello, and then maybe the number as well. All right, so let's try that. So if this works, what should happen is our another service which is listening to the event should connect, or should I uh, be triggered, and we should have this print out. Let's try it. And good, so just like that, we see that our event was received just right. Awesome. So that covers our server-side events.
and that's pretty nice. The next section here is wrap module. And again, we're not going to really look into this one right here because it's usually more used internally. But if we wanted to create a, a module, we have a, a third party module that we're using that we want to incorporate the framework into, we could use the wrap module function to do that. What that's going to do is inject things such as the services table and things of that nature. Everything that is shown here, the injected methods, injected properties, those all occur using the wrap module call. The next section is going to be on the client table and how to expose things to the client. But we are going to save that for a later video because if we first want to get to the controllers uh, before we start actually talking between the two. So next video will be about controllers and then we will talk between the two.